Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, this afternoon or late morning's webinar, Implementing Roma at the Local Level, Using the Performance Management Framework. Uh, we are joined this afternoon uh, by Barbara Mooney from the Association of Nationally Certified Roma Trainers and Courtney Kohler, our senior associate here at the partnership. And this webinar culminates uh, a series that we have been developing uh, with ANSWERT for the last couple of years uh, that was developed out of feedback both from uh, ROMA trainers and implementers, and also a series of training and technical assistance meetings uh, that the partnership through our Organizational Standards Center of Excellence has been organizing um, with our uh, Regional Performance and Innovation Consortia um, over the past several years. Uh, the purpose of uh, this webinar is to review material that's been developed as part of this broader effort uh, to build a set of curricula for ROMA trainers and implementers to use at their agency. So this is one part of a broader series of materials that are available both on the partnership and ANSERT website and intended for trainers and implementers uh, uh, in addition to anyone else who feels like that they, uh, they can use this material uh, to help build agency capacity to fully implement uh, the ROMA cycle and broader ROMA framework at their agency. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Courtney to talk about learning objectives for today. Courtney, take it away. All right. Well, thank you, Jarl. Um, and as Jarl mentioned, um, Barbara Mooney and I will be uh, leading you through the components of this piece of the curriculum today. Um, so we're happy to be with you. And our learning objectives for today, um, what we're going to be doing is um, understanding the basic principles of results orientation. We're going to look at how ROMA fits into the performance management framework and acknowledge that we have to start with that assessment piece. We'll also discuss the importance of organizational culture and building a Roma culture. And we'll identify the elements of what we call an impact pathway plan. Although we can't go through all the components of the full workshop today, we will be um, uh, referencing the different parts of the full uh, workshop for implementing Roma. And so you can see here on your screen what those different components and learning objectives are. Um, for the full workshop, um, so it'll go into deeper um, material on the results orientation. It'll prepare um, agencies to create a local theory of change. Um, of course, we also have additional curriculum components on the local theory of change as well. We will also consider what is meant by implementation of the full ROMA cycle. Um, uh, we'll talk a little bit about a ROMA audit today. Then we're going to talk, um, of course, the full workshop goes into more on the impact pathway plan. It discusses the concepts of organizational culture um, and an agency-wide understanding of ROMA. And it explores measuring and monitoring progress and success. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Barbara Mooney. And she's going to talk to us about the first part of this curriculum series. Hi, thanks, Jarl and uh, Courtney. Uh, we're going to look a little bit at uh, what it means to implement the full Roma cycle. Uh, it's part of um, what we're about with our new uh, performance management framework. So we're going to look at some pieces of it. Uh, the, the first thing we want to look at really is Organizational Standard 4.3, which is really uh, what has uh, moved us to consider what does it how do we actually define um, this concept of uh, documenting the continuous use of the full ROMA cycle and how we could use um, certified uh, ROMA trainers or uh, implementers to assist. Of course, this is all part of the CSBG performance management framework vision that really is about providing accountability at local agency level, state, and also federal levels to ensure uh, efficiency and effectiveness of the, uh, the CSBG funding as it is um, uh, applied at the local level to demonstrate stronger results for individuals, families, and communities. This, these are the pieces of that framework, uh, organizational standards, state and federal accountability measures, ROMA, 
uh, the CSBG state plan and annual report and the American Customer Satisfaction Inventory Survey. Roma is, you know, we, we think about Roma, we talk about Roma, but let's just break down those words for a minute and think about the pieces of it, that it's a, a results orientation, that it says that the services and strategies that the agency provides should have an impact, should have a result. It should not just be about the provision of services, but it should include the concept of, uh, of a results orientation of the agency. And it's about management and accountability to know that the efforts uh, have achieved those results. These are the elements of the Roma cycle. I'm sure that you've all seen the cycle and, uh, and understand it, but what we're going to do is talk a little bit about the pieces of the Roma cycle and um, how we can uh, apply those um, pieces to our work. When we talk about Roma next generation, uh, there were a few things that uh, have been uh, added to those basic concepts of Roma and includes a national theory of change and local theories of change, a new annual report, which has an increased focus on community level work and on the analysis and use of data. But it also uh, helps us to understand the integration of all the phases of the Roma cycle so that we're not thinking um, about assessment as being a, a separate piece that it's, um, do we do the assessment and we set it aside and we don't think about it, but no, we are thinking about how the assessment can be integrated throughout the operation of the agency's performance. This is a, a, a simplistic uh, version, a uh, view actually, of the overlap between the organizational standards and the Roma cycle. Um, you see that the organizational standards are broader and having to do with board governance, human resource uh, management and financial operations, as well as consumer and community involvement. Uh, but they have at the core these pieces of um, the functioning of an agency, assessment planning, reporting, data collection and analysis, and organizational leadership. And they also look, uh, the Roma cycle also looks at the implementation of services and strategies. And Roma principles are embedded throughout the organizational standards. So it isn't a matter of saying, do we do uh, the organization, what do we do first, organizational standards or Roma, but rather of thinking that we are doing those things simultaneously. This is the National Community Action Theory of Change, which sets out this performance management concept and, uh, and also embeds those in the goals, strategies, and principles of the network. Well, there's more information about all the pieces of the uh, National Theory of Change in our workshop. Uh, the things that we want to look at today are about uh, the performance management questions. How well does the network operate and what difference does the network make? And you'll see organizational standards, state and federal accountability, and Roma are part of answering the first question, and the national performance indicators part of answering the second question. So what stands in the way of a results orientation? Um, we, we've been um, talking about Roma since the 1998 um, reauthorization of the Community Services uh, Block Grant, but we've had two decades to make a shift in perspective. So why hasn't it happened uh, universally across the country? Um, one of the reasons is um, that we've had a historical focus on what we do, not we, on what we accomplish, and we often confuse what we do with what happens. So we give out food boxes and people receive those food boxes. That's, um, sometimes uh, we think that that's an out, that's demonstrating an outcome, but it's really what's changed for people that 
uh, that have gotten in food boxes, do we know the answer to that? And the only way we would know that is if we do follow-up. And there's a lack of resources for follow-up for some of the services that we provide. So uh, it, it's caused us to really um, focus on the services, counting the service, counting the services that we are doing, and um, really not thinking about how much follow up would, would, would we would need in order to really identify the results. This is this is a, a, a local theory of change from uh, Kern. County, California, and um, they they had a question. They they asked this question: Have we ended poverty yet? And um, what they they found was that they were delivering basic services um, and, that were essential to stabilize families, and then they were then they were delivering more basic services. And after some discussion and thinking about what they actually wanted to do and they wanted to achieve, um, they came up with the theory of change on the uh, right side of the screen, which shows those still those basic services, but also advocacy and specific uh, uh, work with jobs and education and training and healthcare and asset accumulation that actually would move someone forward up the scale to self-sufficiency. So this is a, an early version of a local theory of change. So it makes us think about these relationships. Um, do we do we provide services, oh, a single service that achieves an outcome? Uh, do we provide a service that might achieve multiple outcomes, like a case management service uh, might assist with outcomes on many different domains? Or it might take multiple services to achieve an outcome to help someone get a job. Um, it might require services in um, education, in transportation, in healthcare, um, in several different domains. Most commonly what happens with the families that receive services from Community Action and our partners is that they're receiving multiple services and they're achieving multiple outcomes, but it's difficult for us to match those things together because of the data systems that we have. The, the final uh, Consistent um, uh, picture here on this slide is the just services providing the services. So that's really um, looking at the provision of services without follow up or without really an intention of making a change in someone's life. We provide a service to meet an immediate need uh, that will help them with their situation, help with stability, but it's not really going to change their lives. So we need to think about these things as we're considering uh, our agency's local theory of change. So we're going to move into the section of thinking about how we're going to implement ROMA. So we need to um, acknowledge that we're going to start with the way we start every ROMA cycle with assessment. So I'm going to ask Courtney to talk about this part. All right. Well, thank you, Barbara. Um, so basically what we're talking about with implementing ROMA um, and like Barbara mentioned, we need to know where we're at now and where we started. Um, and when, if we don't know where we started, we can't identify what has changed. And if we can't identify the change, then we can't acknowledge what success that we've had and what impact that we've had on the lives of um, the families that we serve and the communities that we work with. And so um, what we've worked on here is the idea of a Roma audit and using um, this sort of checklist method um, for implementation of Roma. And so this ROMA audit really helps to identify what you're doing now that helps to demonstrate each phase of the ROMA cycle, and then what could actually be done differently to include the ROMA element and improve. And so this current status piece is very important um, to identify kind of this baseline, what the needs are, and then identify what we want to see change and make the plan from there. So on this next slide, you can see that there is a, a resource that has been, um, this has actually been out in the network for a little while now. Um, so some agencies have already started to work on this and pilot this. 
Um, and as a part of this curriculum, we do have an example from a local community action agency um, that shows how they walk through their Roma audit process. And so um, this checklist, though, contains some of these elements that you can see here on your screen. So it walks through the mission and the local theory of change and talks about which Roma action items associate with that piece of the Roma cycle. Then it moves on to assessment, talks about the various parts of the community needs assessment, whether your agency is currently including and doing those items related to Roma, and then on to planning. Um, and then as you go on down further, um, the checklist also has information about implementation, observation of results and reporting, analysis of data and evaluation, and then of course that important piece of reassessment to make sure that we are using the information that we've learned from previous Roma cycles um, to go into our work for program improvement um, and our assessment the next time. So this is kind of the checklist and then of course it continues on to the side where agencies can make notes and um, talk about where they're at with this implementation of Roma using this Roma audit process. And so in each phase of the Roma cycle, it helps you to consider who is involved and what do they do, what is expected to be achieved in this phase, how will you know if it's done well or if it is successful, how do you collect, aggregate, and analyze the data in each section, and then what makes this process really useful. Um, and so this is how it can be used by the local agency. And again, basically the whole point of this is really to have an understanding of the baseline so that you can have a better understanding of what is happening right now and also what is not happening currently. And then that next step is really to consider exactly what you think you could change. Um, and this kind of leads into a discussion about organizational culture as well. And so we'll be talking about that here in a minute, but I'm going to hand it back to Barbara and she's going to talk some about how the Roma audit then connects to this idea of an impact pathways plan. Thanks, Courtney. Uh, so thinking of an impact pathways plan, um, it's kind of a mouthful, but um, we're, we're trying to figure out a, a good way to say we, we need to create a pathway to um, a system where we understand what the impact is, um, what the impact is of our work uh, as Roma uh, professionals or as uh, agency staff who's involved with elements of the Roma cycle. Um, and, and, and we want to make sure that we are thinking of a plan. So this, pl this path that we're talking about will really help the agencies using their certified Roma professionals um, uh, make explicit both their personal and their agency identified expectations related to implementing Roma. So we've been working on um, talking about how to implement Roma and have we implemented or what have we done, but without having the assessment of what we need that Courtney just talked about and then this concept of an identified plan, it's hard for us to know uh, whether we've improved or not, uh, whether we've improved visibility or we've improved performance. When we talk to um, some implementers in the field, they, they say that there's some anxiety about approaching agency change. They need some steps. They need to have a map. And um, so we thought, well, if we could cr help them create this map or pathway, uh, that would help us as a network understand what's working, what we need to do differently. So we're thinking of two things in this plan. We're thinking of scaling up and scaling out. Uh, scaling up involves this Roma culture uh, that Courtney's mentioned uh, before, and which we'll talk more about, and at which you'll have more information in the workshop about assessing your agency's culture and building your Roma culture, both in the agency and throughout the uh, network so that we can embrace this concept of the results orientation. But scaling out is um, this um, uh, 
transfer of knowledge. It's spreading from peer to peer throughout the nation uh, so that we are all talking about performance management and continuous improvement um, and those uh, quality uh, aspects of performance that are important. Now, so scaling up is about supporting the local culture, organizational culture. It's about embracing a local theory of change, and it's about connecting with the national theory of change so that we have both organizational culture and we have national community action network culture that's based on a results orientation. So one of the things that you need to do is consider how work gets done in your organization right now. Um, when we talk about the culture of an organization, I'm sure this is um, not new to you, but just to make sure that we're talking about the same thing, uh, we recognize that an organization has um, has underlying beliefs about how the organization should respond to the environment that they're in, uh, what's appropriate for people to, uh, to do as they interact with each other, uh, things about decision making and chain of command. But the beliefs about all that, the assumptions about all of that are embedded in the organization's culture. And it's reflected in the way that the work is organized at the agency, and how technologies are used. And it really affects how people understand the conditions um, related to poverty that, that we're working on. It's learned beliefs and traditions, um, it's principles, and it really is about guides for the individual workers inside the organization. It's a collective set of behaviors that are shared, and it's important for us to be able to articulate these behaviors and beliefs and principles so that uh, we understand the relationships among the people in the organization. This is a a quote, um, no matter the change, no matter the organization, there's one constant that largely determines success or failure, and it's the role and importance of organizational culture. So um, we know that in order for us to really change the way uh, we look at the world, to change to a results orientation, to implement some of the principles of Roma, we, we have to understand the culture over the organization so that we're not fighting against the culture. Because if we fight against a culture, um, research tells us that the culture will win. And we want to set ourselves up for success and not for failure. So we have a, um, uh, an organizational culture assessment tool that's on the web that will be part of the workshop uh, that you can help to look around your agency and see what's happening and then uh, think about what the, cult the changed culture would look like and then include some activities about this change uh, in your pathways plan. So um, if we want to move to a results-oriented culture, what does that look like? So we have some ideas about that. Uh, one of the things that we hear all the time is, well, we can't change the culture because there's no buy-in at the top. Um, and so we, we've talked to a couple of, um, of executive directors who tell us their story, uh, one in particular um, who talked about this was her, having no buy-in. Uh, she didn't buy into the concepts. Uh, but then uh, once she started working with the organizational standards, she realized, oh, well, to meet the minimal requirements, uh, they'd have to really start to think about Roma. And then as she moved towards understanding the process of Roma, uh, she was um, able to to have a shift or to start a shift. And as the executive director, she could move the agency forward towards this shift. So the idea of having an executive director buy-in is certainly important, 
but but we heard it over and over. Well, I can't do anything because I'm not the executive director or because the executive director doesn't buy in. And if we believe that, if that's true, that we can't do anything unless the executive director buys in, um, then we don't have anywhere to go. We don't have any plan to take. But we started to think about, well, is it does it have to be the executive director that buys in? Or do we just want to think about this concept of a champion? So we're thinking about who is the champion at your agency? Of course, we would hope that the person at the top, the, the CEO, the executive director, was going to be a champion for a results orientation. But if that's not the case, we need to find the champion, uh, someone from the agency leadership who has some authority, uh, who has influence. But we can't just stop there because it could be anyone in the agency who's passionate about this anti-poverty work. And you'll see in the case study from the Missouri organization that the move to forward is really being um, generated by the nationally um, certified Roma trainer on board. Now she does have the um, the backing of the executive director, uh, which is which is a good thing. But it's her passion that's driving things forward. So I I think that's one of the first things that you want to identify is is not only what can you do personally, but who are the other champions in your organization um, that you could get to join together to make some changes? And then what will the change look like? Well, um, these are the seven building blocks that we've identified. Now, we've been working on pulling this together for about a year. We've talked to people across the country uh, in various um, forums and um, opportunities for interaction. And so we've come up with these uh, ideas that there has to first be a recognition of a results orientation. Um, the agency has to say it's not good enough for us to just provide services. Remember that slide with um, all the services with no outcomes. That's not that's not acceptable to us. We want to make sure that we have a connection between the services we provide and some results. And then that we have a broad exposure in our agency to the basic concepts of Roma, that we all understand the principles of the Roma cycle so that um, that we have that basic foundation to build on. And that we have executive staff and board accept it. Now, when we say that we can't, uh, we can't wait for there to be executive director buy-in um, because we want to have champions. We also want to say that we know that it's important for the executive staff and the board to really accept and participate in the concept of performance management. So um, while we might have it at number three rather than at number one, that nothing else can happen without the executive director buy-in, we want to make sure that, that we're acknowledging that the executive staff and board has to be on board with this with this culture change, and that you have to have um, a, people in a trusted position that are trained staff. One of the one of the barriers that we've seen with Roma implementation is that individuals who've been certified uh, go back to their agency and say. I don't have any authority or influence to make these changes. I'm not in what we're calling a trusted position. We're, uh, we're saying we need, to, we need to have people that are in positions that can do some influence, uh, that are trained and understand the basic concepts. And that we have a shared language that we all understand whether we're talking about continuous improvement, quality improvement, or we're talking about um, the Roma cycle, that we're all, all sharing uh, the concepts of performance management in the same way. We also know that this cannot be just about CSBG funded activities. This has to be a whole agency acceptance. This has to, this Roma culture has to permeate the agency. And it has to be incorporated into existing regular activities because if it doesn't, 
if it's not incorporated, then it's one more thing to add to the burden of the staff's work, and 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 it becomes uh, it, it becomes challenged, and uh, and it becomes more difficult to implement. So these are just some basic ideas. There's more information about each of these pieces um, in the workshop material that will help you to think about each of these. The next thing that we're talking about is this scale out, this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, sharing of information. This is very important because it shows us that ROMA implementation cannot be done by a single person, and this is acknowledging that. We're suggesting that, that you talk to your peers, that you have a planning partner, that you have at least one other person that's engaged in this culture change with you, um, that you organize a group of people that can uh, talk about actions to improve the agency's efficiency and effectiveness, and that you, uh, that you create stories uh, about expected impact, that you really share the, the uh, process of performance management throughout the agency. Um, I know the best the best implementation has happened when there have been uh, teams of uh, of folks, you know, frontline staff as well as uh, mid management and upper management that have all talked about the implementation of Roma at their level and how all of those things join together in a way that supports the implementation of Roma. So once you've thought about all of that, then we're asking that you think about one issue that you're going to address. If you try to change everything all at once, it's going to be frustrating for you and you may not experience success that way. So we're suggesting you identify one thing and you clearly identify what's currently happening, you clearly identify what could change and what what you need to help to make that change happen. So this is um, one example. Um, we do a good job of reporting in outputs, but not such a good job when we report in outcomes. So some of the questions that we would ask in order to start our plan, how is the reporting on output structured? Uh, who does it? How is it measured? How is it collected? And then what's the related outcome to that output? So how would you know if something changed? Uh, who would do that data collection and how would they measure it? So then you want to identify the point where the system is breaking down and figure out what the barrier is. Um, and then once you've gotten all that data, you think about what is the first thing that could happen? Um, what will open the door for the change that you want to see happen? So, um, and then that helps you to establish the pathway to support the establishment of the new actions. So thinking about what's current, digging deep into it so that you actually can see the point where there could be an opportunity option for change. And we have a little example. This is a little example. Uh, the dark blue boxes is a flow chart of what's happening now. And the light blue are, are comments that say this is what might happen um, that could help uh, make a change. This is where a change could happen. Uh, in the third step, there's no plan for follow-up. So uh, there, right there, you're seeing that that's a point of breakdown. Um, so this is a way to help consider uh, what's happening and what could happen uh, that could change. And uh, some things that you might need for change to make that impact in the center. You need to have enough knowledge. You have uh, the people that are involved in the process. They have to have skills and they need to have interest. Uh, and then you have to have resources. You might need technic 
technology, you might need time, um, what are the resources that you need. You need to identify that before you put a plan into action. Um, what is it that you need? And this is just, you know, could be anything out here to the left, uh, what you might need to make a change. So considering all of that and then creating some action steps. So this is a a pathways plan that uses a flow chart uh, similar to what we saw. And then the next slide is a plan, uh, an action plan that's adapted from some of the strategic planning workshops that we've done in the past where you identify what the action steps are, the timeline, who's going to be involved, what resources you need. What, how you're going to measure success. So there are a couple of uh, uh, templates to help you develop this plan for making an impact uh, to, to create your pathways. So all of this is important, but it has to fit into a context. And I'm going to ask Courtney to talk a little bit about local theory of change as our context. All right. Well, thank you, Barbara. Um, so this next part is kind of bringing it all together agency-wide into this local theory of change. So like Barbara said, this kind of helps to bring it all together into the same context. So as you think about it, you know, considering your own agency mission and the services and strategies that you provide, this can really be a window into what you're communicating to your agency as well as your community. And so what you're communicating here is, are these really the assumptions of your agency, your staff, your board? Um, what are those assumptions related to your mission statement? And does your mission, um, as well as your services, help to identify the big goals that your agency has? And so some agencies do um, these activities and are surprised to see what the community might be thinking about them. Um, and it isn't what they, you know, want to project. So they have to consider what they need to do um, to fix their image and the assumptions that are um, around them as far as how they are portrayed. And so this local theory of change is what you can look at to help shift this perspective and what does your agency really believe that it should be doing to address issues related to poverty in your community. And then the answer to this question will help to guide the selection of outcomes and actions that will then accomplish those main outcomes and broad goals. So there's a lot of information um, in other places about creating a local theory of change. So we're not going to go into a lot of detail today. Um, we do have other curriculum components on creating a local theory of change within the Roma Next Generation training series. Um, but you know, if the agency has done the theory of change, then the agency knows what it wants to accomplish and how it thinks it should do this work. And so really, this is how we kind of look to this results orientation and really understand what the agency believes, what they expect to accomplish, why are they in business, um, do they, is what they're doing perpetuating poverty in the community, or um, are we making it easier for people to obtain self-sufficiency? Um, so really digging down deep and thinking about what are these current assumptions that the community portrays and then what is it the agency wants to portray um, to the community about their purpose and mission. So there's two different views of, you know, how then we work to accomplish these outcomes we've been talking about. And so sometimes the more um, you know, what we see in a lot of agencies sometimes is this program outcomes that are identified in silos. And what we're hoping to move more toward is this integrated view of agency outcomes where we're looking agency-wide and we're looking at strategically at what commitments and focus areas that the agency has based on the community needs assessment. And so many agencies do a great job of identifying outcomes for each of their specific programs, but how well are they looking at the larger agency outcomes and meeting the national goals? So now we'll shift over to measuring your progress, and Barbara's going to talk about this. So um, a lot of times we fail to build in um, the measurement 
in our plans. And we'd like you to be sure to be thinking that um, you'll want to know in six months or a year if anything's changed. Um, your agency will want to know. The network wants to know what's changed. And so we need to be able to think ahead so that we can actually uh, demonstrate our progress in the implementation of ROMA. And then we're going to want to know if this is going to, if this does anything for us. What we've got here is a very simple version of a scorecard that um, that's built on that Roma audit that uh, Courtney showed earlier. Um, this is just a mock-up of um, something where you'd have uh, June 18, December 18, June 19, December 19 um, as the points in time to uh, to look at where where the agency was at um, with these identification in these areas. So in the mission statement, they had a mission statement, but it's improved. They didn't have a local theory of change, but they're working on it now. They're thinking about it. They're working towards it. So um, you could you could actually see progress over a year, over two years, as you start to implement Roma. The scorecard concept is becoming more valuable as we we realize the uh, the importance of the graphic representation of our progress. And this is just a clear, simple way to be able to show uh, progress going forward. Of course, in the long run, we are going to want to say. The implementation of Roma has helped our agency achieve results, and we're going to need to have some additional um, information about that. Um, and, and that's going to be part of how we build out this implementation of Roma. So just some closing thoughts here. Um, just some things. What what do, what else do you need to know about implementing Roma? Um, is your agency or your organization uh, going to be looking at uh, implementation of Roma in this holistic way that we've presented today? Um, considering how what we're doing already, what needs to happen? Um, you want to make sure you're getting credit, you're giving yourself credit for what you're already doing. Uh, I know when we think about, oh, we're going to implement Roma, sometimes people think, oh, it's a whole brand new thing, but it isn't. I hope in our discussion today um, that Courtney and I have helped you think about what you're already doing. But then what needs to happen for improvement or for to be done differently? And who's going to take a lead in doing that? Uh, is there someone that's actually responsible for uh, for this process at your agency? And to really consider your role. Um, is Roma valued in the organization? And do you have tasks and responsibilities specifically related to some elements of the Roma implementation? What are the other professionals in um, your agency uh, saying about the work related to Roma? Um, do you have a value in in your implementation of Roma, your ideas, your discussions about Roma? Do you bring up Roma in, in all the discussions that you're having in your agency? How do you view your work? Um, what is your contribution and what could your contribution be to the agency's uh, improvement? So just finally asking you some rhetorical questions here. What's the first thing that you'll do? Will you use the checklist to assess your current Roma uh, implementation? Uh, can you think about creating a plan and a scorecard to, so that you can measure your movement uh, forward? Um, so I, I don't know if we have any questions that have been posed in the chat or if you have if anyone has a question or a thought that they'd like to um that they'd like to to raise at this point i see someone has a hand up but i don't know if that was just an accident or you know, we don't have any questions that have come in at this point um we do we did have a comment um, actually about the building blocks of Roma culture. Um, someone said they feel like this is really critical. What seems to happen is you know, agencies provide performance reports to the board and that's where it ends. 
Um, so not necessarily seeing board minutes discussion of what this shows and what we could change based on where we are at. Oh, good, good. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good observation. Right, so not any other, other? Oh, actually, we just questions. had a couple come through. Um, so let's see, one question is just about the um, slides or will they be available on the website? And yes, we are recording this session today and the slides will be available to download after um, this webinar. So usually we get the slides and recording posted within the next two business days. Um, and then we'll also, this will also be part of the Implementing Roma curriculum. So whenever we get all of the components posted, um, which will be by the end of October um, in a packaged curriculum, then this will be available as part of that as well. Um, but I will say that the, the recording and the slides for this particular webinar will be available within the next two days on the resource library and the partnership website. Um, then we also had um, another comment or question just saying, I uh, wonder about the value of reflective practice to have these important conversations. How can we influence this practice? I, I think that's an important uh, uh, question. One of the pieces um, that we want to develop going forward is this concept of how to influence um, someone in your agency. So the idea of identifying uh, influence clusters in your organization, uh, finding out who makes the decisions, uh, and really considering who do you need to talk to to give the most bang for your buck in terms of making uh, uh, influence uh, happen. So yes, I think that's an important um, important characteristic of the process going forward. Um, and we should have some um, materials out about um, the, the idea of influence uh, as we go forward. Okay. Um, another question that we just got in is, do you recommend to get the agency board involved in the Roma practice? And if so, what are some ideas? So it's always good to have the Roma board involved. And um, that's why one of the building blocks says uh, agency staff and board uh, needs to be able to uh, accept and demonstrate their, their participation in the idea of uh, the Roma culture. So um, I, I think that um, as you share information, that it's um, more about a dialogue with the board and not just a, oh, here's a presentation, we'll, we'll, we'll come in, we'll present some information, we'll leave, and you go on about your business as usual, but that you have activities where the board actually thinks about um, their, their local theory of change, what they believe their agency should be doing. They actually think about the way things are being done in the organization. Uh, what are the, are we talking about um, outcomes in our reports? You know, look at the reports, uh, make sure that they're friendly um, to the board as well as to the staff uh, to, so that they can make decisions. Because remember, the board has that um, requirement in um, uh, Section 9 of the organizational standards where it is given um, recommendations for change and improvement that's based on the analysis of data. And so the board has to be ready for that kind of information. Um, and the way to do that is to give them activities um, to be engaged in to help them build their skills. It's like any other muscle that you have to exercise uh, to, to give them opportunities so that when they make it, uh, a decision about the suggestions based on analysis of data, um, that they're well informed. And another thing I would add to that too is that we do have a series on uh, Roma for boards. And so that series of um, walks through each piece of the Roma cycle and it actually has um, some different ideas and activities that the board can do to get involved in each phase of the cycle. 
Um, we also had another kind of comment or question on the um, Roma audit checklist. And they were just asking about, um, you know, because we only showed part of it, about what is, you know, if it's just a yes, they did it, and that's it. Um, and, you know, this person saying that they feel like that needs more columns where they really describe what they did to carry out the steps in the checklist um, instead of just saying yes or no. Actually, that's the way that the uh, agency in Missouri did the work. They mm -hmm. created additional um, uh, columns. Uh, they identified actually who is doing the pieces uh, when they do it. They created some timelines. So the checklist is really uh, a um, to be a jumping off point. Uh, yes, there there need to be more columns, and the columns need to be something that's um, appropriate for your agency. But we we do ask that you dig deeper. It's not just a yes no check off the box, but it's really it's a checklist in the sense. So these are things to look into. Uh, who's involved? What's expected? Um, how do you how do you know if it's being done in a quality way? So, um, and, and you know the whole idea of of data collection and analysis. What data elements are collected at each section? Um, and so you could have a, a column that talks about the measurement tools that are used to to validate. Uh, that this this piece of the cycle is being done. So yes, we want you to adapt the checklist. We want the audit concept um, grew out of the checklist because we want you to really uh, think about what the agency is doing in a way that's meaningful uh, to you. So yeah, and I would I would also say that the this implementing Roma curriculum, you know, even if the checklist doesn't have specified columns for the agency to, to consider in each of these areas, um, the curriculum is what encourages the agencies to walk through like what these questions are here on the screen that Barbara was talking about um, in relation to each of those Roma actions that are within the checklist. So. So it does kind of guide you to look further than just a yes or no answer. But that's a really good question and a good point to make that this isn't just about a yes, no. I mean, I think some of the organizational standard assessments, but a thinking in terms of uh, is this happening, is it not, that's a good first step. But in order to actually make a change, you need to know what more about what's happening currently. You need to know that baseline information. Okay. Let's see. I think that is all the questions I'm seeing at this point, except there is one about, um, it says we keep referencing a workshop. What do you mean by that? And so I can go ahead and answer that question with the uh, resource slides that we have here. Um, so kind of basically the workshop, there there are several different pieces to this implementing Roma curriculum, um, and they all fit within this Roma Next Generation training series. As you can see here on your screen, the four, or maybe sorry, the five circles that you see across um, are the different components of the Roma Next Generation training series, with that final circle being this what we've been talking about today, the implementing the full Roma cycle. And so within each of these components, including the implementing the full Roma cycle piece, um, it includes an introductory video. Um, it also includes um, the slides from the introductory video. Then it includes what we call a workshop um, with an accompanying facilitator guide. And so the workshop is um, the full PowerPoint curriculum of talking about implementing Roma. Um, and then there is that facilitator guide that walks either a Roma trainer, a Roma implementer, or someone else that's knowledgeable on Roma, walks them through the process of how would you actually implement Roma within the agency. Um, and so it's a little bit um, twofold, a little bit of a guide on a how to for implement Roma as well as how would you train your agency to understand these different concepts that are included as well. 
And so the, there's a few more components that are included in the curriculum package. Um, there is also an example with a case study, which we've been referencing today with the agency from Southwest Missouri. Um, then there is um, some supplementary um, resources and handouts and tools. So like the Roma audit that you saw, the impact pathway plan, um, all of those are included for agencies to utilize and adapt for their needs. Um, and then within the course that we'll have on Community Action Academy, um, there is also a couple of um, activities and peer sharing um, components to that. And so this whole curriculum package can be accessed in two different ways. Um, you can go through Community Action Academy, which is where we have a, um, a variety of on-demand e-courses. And our full Roma Next Generation training series um, will be on there. And so implementing Roma is one of these courses. And so you can go in and create a new account, um, or if you already have an account, um, they're free to create. You go to moodle.communityactionpartnership.com. Once you confirm your account, you'll be able to get in. You can go to the Roma training category and then Roma Next Generation training series. And then that is where you'll see these different courses that you see here on your screen with implementing Roma being what we've talked about today. And so it'll have all those different components that I just listed out um, as far as the introductory video, the workshop and facilitator guide, the supplementary tools and resources, um, as well as the example, and then the um, activities and peer sharing. So that's one way to access it. The other way is through our partnership website. Um, and so it's communityactionpartnership.com. And then if you go into our um, tools and resources section and go to our resource library, we have a Roma Next Generation resource guide. And so you can find the Roma Next Generation training series there, which this is a part of. All of that will be uploaded by the end of October. Um, and then we have the other series we've referenced today with the Roma for Boards. Anything you want to add on that, Barbara? No, I think that still covers it. Um, we're, we'll be posting the workshop slides, as Courtney said, uh, by the end of the by the end of the month. Uh, we've been testing this material uh, with the network because we wanted it to be as useful as possible, um, and so we'll be pulling this all together now uh, during this month. All right. I'm not seeing any other questions that have come through. Um, so we'll go ahead and wrap up with giving you our contact information. So if you have any questions regarding this webinar um, or the curriculum materials, um, or if you struggle finding them, um, just a reminder that, as we said, they won't be posted till um, closer to the end of October, um, potentially mid-October, but we will send out um, an e-news announcement whenever all of them are posted. Um, but feel free to email us with any questions in the meantime. Um, I'm Courtney Kohler. Uh, the senior associate there. We also have Jar Crocker, our director of training and technical assistance, who you heard at the very beginning. Um, and then Barbara Mooney, who's been uh, joined us today. And then we, uh, of course, Carrie Gibson as well with um, answered also. So with that, uh, we thank you all for joining us today. And any final words, Barbara? No, just thank you very much. And if you use our materials and uh, you have an adaptation that works well for you, please let us know so that we can incorporate it into our examples so that, uh, that we can improve the material. So anytime that you make an adaptation, just let us know. All right. Well, thank you all and have a great day. Thank you.